On the 1st of January, 1818, English author Mary Shelley's gothic masterpiece, Frankenstein, was released. The novel, which follows the story of a mad scientist whose experiments to keep death at bay see him create a monster out of the body parts of executed felons, received mixed reviews. One critic wrote that the premise of the story was a disgusting and horrible absurdity. Disgusting? Yes. Horrible? Absolutely. But absurd? Well, actually, no. Mary Shelley had seemingly glimpsed the future when she created Dr. Frankenstein and his pitiful monster. 130 years after her story was published, an American Cold War era neurosurgeon attempted to do what Mary Shelley's frenzied physician had done. Welcome to Intrigued Mind, where today we take a grisly look at Dr. Robert J. White, the doctor who transplanted heads, and the current state of play on the indelicate issue of human head body transplants. Dr. Robert J. White was born on the 21st of January, 1926, in Duluth, Minnesota. When White was in high school, his science teacher complimented him on his dissection of a frog's head. This was the event that inspired White to pursue a career in neurosurgery. He went on to gain his medical degree from Harvard in 1953. Dr. White, who referred to himself as Humble Bob, was a deeply devout Catholic. And whilst science and religion have never truly been cozy bedfellows, Humble Bob, who prayed every time he performed surgery on a patient, was interested in the concept of preserving the soul. And just like Dr. Frankenstein, who could not accept that death was the end, Dr. White decided that the best way to preserve the soul and prolong life was to preserve the brain, which is where he considered the human soul to reside. He was quoted in 1967 as saying of a brain he was holding in his hand, it was perfume, but now it's an empty bottle, but the fragrance is still there. In 1970, Dr. White conducted the first of many experiments in which he attempted to preserve a living brain. Now, this is where things become decidedly ghoulish and akin to something from a supernatural horror story. Dr. White cut the head off a living monkey and transplanted it onto the body of another. This poor creature was paralyzed from the neck down because the spine and spinal cord was severed during the experiment. Yet, the reattached head continued to live, for want of a better word. For nine days, it could see, hear, smell, taste, and eat. These experiments, which numbered five in total, earned Dr. White the nickname Dr. Butcher by animal rights activists. Not to be dissuaded, 20 years later, Dr. White was planning to take the step up from monkeys to humans. He expressed a desire to perform a head transplant for actor Christopher Reeve, who became a quadriplegic in 1995 after a horse riding accident and for physicist Stephen Hawking, who suffers from motor neurone disease. How these two men felt about the offer is undocumented. Dr. White had already begun to practice on human cadavers at a mortuary. By the late 1990s, Dr. White had found his first willing human participant, one Craig Vetovitz, a man who was a quadriplegic and whose organs were failing. Mr. Vetovitz's head was to be removed from his body and transplanted onto the body of a brain-dead patient who had donated their body to science. Now remember what we said earlier about Dr. White's religious leanings? He counted not one, but two popes as personal friends during his lifetime, and was asked by Pope Paul VI and Pope John Paul II to serve on the Vatican's bioethics board. But not even humble Bob could smoke this one past the Vatican, and he never received papal blessings for his transplant surgery on humans, despite his own unshakable faith that God was the guiding hand behind all of his work. Moreover, the procedure itself would have cost $4 million, and no one had the stomach to stump up that kind of money for such a radical and divisive operation. Added to this was Dr. White's appearance on tabloid TV program, Hard Copy, on Halloween no less, and his macabre public appearances with the words Dr. Frankenstein emblazoned on his medical bag. Whilst the medical community knew the good doctor to be a brilliant surgeon, the public saw him as a complete quack. But this is not the end of the story. Dr. White's pioneering work meant that the next generation of Dr. Frankensteins were able to take up the mantle. Enter Dr. Sergio Canavero and Dr. Xiaoping Ren. Now, as you may have discerned, the issue with transplanting a head is not the head. Humble Bob's nightmarish monkey experiments demonstrated that the head came through the surgery in okay shape, and the body was still alive too. The problem lay with the spinal cord, that vital structure that connects the two and is the channel of communication between them. Dr. White was able to, after 18 hours of surgery, reconnect everything, everything that is apart from the spinal cord. And if the spinal cord does not work, then the whole exercise is kind of pointless. This is where Dr. Canavero and Dr. Ren came in. 
Their work, which was published in a scientific journal in 2019, detailed their experiments on dogs and monkeys, where their spinal cords were fully severed and then reconnected. Incredibly, these animals were able to walk again after the operation. This all took place at China's Harbin Medical University, with the results published in an American peer-reviewed medical journal. Dr. Canavero's position is that the long-held view by the medical community that a severed spinal cord means game over for the patient is wrong. Dr. Rin believes that the time to commence human trials is now. So how, you may ask, did these doctors fix a severed spinal cord? The answer lies in a remarkable substance called polyethylene glycol, or PEG for short. This amazing goop essentially acts as a glue on the two severed ends of the spinal cord. There are, however, two caveats to this incredible possibility. One is that the spinal cord severing needs to be a clean cut. The other is that the reconnection procedure costs an eye-watering $13 million. Dr. Robert White had a colleague who was witness to his grotesque monkey experiments in the 1970s, Dr. Jerry Silver. Describing the experiments as fairly barbaric, Dr. Silver rejects the possibility of a successful human head transplant as complete fantasy. He also recalls the facial expressions of the wretched animals after they woke up, which were, not surprisingly, full of confusion, anxiety, and fear. This does not seem to be a prohibitive factor in the here and now. Dr. Canavero has stated that the waiting list of recipients for a head transplant, or rather, a full body transplant as Dr. White more accurately called it, is quite long. Both Dr. Canavero and Dr. Rin have made it clear that China is the only country that is forward-thinking or cavalier enough to host such a procedure. They say that Europe and America are still held back by the moral and ethical dilemmas that such a proposition presents. The first human head body transplant, which is estimated to cost $100 million, was close to being signed off on in 2019, with an unnamed Chinese donor and recipient, matched for build, being the guinea pigs. Dr. Canavero will cut the spinal cord cleanly with a diamond blade, plunge the head into a deep state of hypothermia for preservation purposes, and then work with a vast team of doctors for 24 hours to separate and then connect bones, veins, the trachea, and the esophagus. The patient will be sitting upright for the operation, attached to machines to keep their body breathing and pumping blood. Not surprisingly, they will be kept in a drug-induced coma for the recovery period. If this landmark operation goes ahead and succeeds, and money is not a prohibitive factor, it begs the question, if you could, would you? If someone could go back in time and tell all of this to Mary Shelley, we bet she would fall off her chair. Dr. Canavero believes that it is not medical science that is holding back this bold and astonishing innovation, but rather moral and ethical concerns. One thing is for sure, China is at the forefront of this groundbreaking proposal, and they will not be held back by the historical notions of right and wrong that make this concept so very repulsive to the Western world. So where do you sit on this prickly issue, dear viewer? Do you love life so dearly that you would agree to live it in a body that you were not born in? Or is the idea so repugnant to you that you would rather die? Let us know in the comments. We leave you with this anecdote. A Russian man was all set to do the surgery when he decided to bow out in 2019. Valery Spiridonov, a 33-year-old computer scientist who suffers from a muscle wasting disease and is confined to a wheelchair, was ready to have his head transplanted onto a healthy body when he met the love of his life. They married, and now he has a son. The knowledge of how long the surgery and subsequent recovery would take, as well as the risk that he may die, made him change his mind. I've got my own things to do, Mr. Spiridonov said. In my life appeared a woman who I fell in love with. Perhaps there is a grain of truth in these words, that love is, perhaps, powerful enough to conquer all. For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel, like the video, and leave your suggestions in the comments below.